Welcome, my dear friends. Uh, this is a very, very special recording. This is not really meant to be part of my regular channel, but this is a Christmas video that I do every year. Uh, for about the last 25 years, I have written a Christmas story, mainly for me and my family, uh, involving Christmas. And most of the time, the years, they have been fictitious stories that I have simply made up and tried to uh, emphasize uh, the meaning of Christmas within them. But, uh, and so, and I've done some on video the last uh, two or three years. I haven't been able to top them out in recent years. So uh, that's what I do. But this year is Christmas 2022 that I'm talking about. But uh, I'd like to tell you about my one of my first Christmases uh, that I ever experienced. And this year, I'd like to tell you about my first woke Christmas. And uh, I hope you heard me correctly. I want to tell you about my first woke Christmas. And I know some people, uh, they listen so you understand what I'm talking about. We're in a real neat place today. And uh, I'm here on this is State Road 137 side off and uh, I forget the name of the little river here and a little waterfall over there if you can see it. Real neat place though. But my first woke Christmas uh, that I, I'm going to tell you about. Uh, nowadays when you hear the word woke uh, they're, they're referring to waking up and realizing uh, the age that we're in. And within that it's not really a good thing that they're saying. Uh, when they say we've become woke, or I'm part of the woke crowd, uh, they mean that's the bunch who believes in abortion. That's the bunch who uh, believes in homosexuality. That's the bunch who believes in mutilating their little children, little boys, to try to change them into a boy into a girl. Uh, that means that they uh, uh, believe that there's no distinction in the race. And uh, that means they believe that you're supposed to hate white males. What about that? Uh, strange, isn't it? How there's not to be any distinction in race, yet they want you to hate a white male. Uh, and uh, and uh, they believe that you're supposed to believe in socialism and that uh, the government's supposed to pay for everything that you need in your life, that you're not supposed to have to work for anything. And all the big corporations are supposed to take care of you and keep you up. And, to, and uh, they believe that the big corporations can talk about human rights and yet hook up with the Chinese and totally ignore the rights, human rights of Chinese or North Koreans. And so uh, it's strange what all they mean by woke. And they mean by that that they believe that they can go into the cities and take them over and burn them down because they think it's all right for them to do so. Well, that's what the woke crowd of 2022 seems to believe. Now, if I haven't defined them correctly, uh, you bear with me. I think I'm pretty close in, in what they have to say and what they have to believe. And they believe it's all right to steal, to cheat to kill if if it's need be uh, that's what my understanding of the woke so-called movement is in our day and time well my friends let me tell you about my first woke Christmas it wasn't 2022 it was in December of 1976 because bear with me because back up the clock to August of 1976 uh, that morning I got up and the same as I usually got up. But it was my day off from the work. I worked at the supermarket at the time. And, uh, and I was a sinner. I knew not the Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, and I started out my day just like others, seeking worldly things to do that day. Willing to drink, willing to curse, whatever may come my way. I was all for it. It didn't matter because I was a sinner and I'd sinned and come short of the glory of God. And I was thinking that I enjoyed my life of sin 
had a four-wheel drive and a motorcycle, a gun to hunt with, and a boat. I had a kayak at that time in my life. I thought, well, life is good. I'm enjoying this. And uh, But you know what happened that day as I climbed up upon the roof of the house to paint a chimney. I was painting the chimney in August. Of course, it was hot, but not unbearable that morning. But I had been hearing the gospel. A girl whom I was dating had been writing down the gospel and giving it to me. And uh, I had read that. I had been going to church some. I'd been hearing a preacher preach. Up to this point, I said, well, I'm not interested in any of this. This doesn't appeal to me. But that morning, as I was painting that chimney, a presence of a great being came across me and came over me. I know now what it was. At the time, I didn't know what it was. But a great, great being came over me. I couldn't see it. I couldn't touch it. But I could tell a great presence had fallen upon me. It was that of the Holy Ghost of God had fallen upon me, bringing me great conviction. And as that great being pressed all about me like a cloud, no way to escape from it, I was in the midst of it, and I realized that I was a sinner. For the first time in my life, I woke up and saw that I was a sinner. I realized that everything that I'd ever done was all in sin. And I was born a simple parent. I lived in a simple world. Everything that I did was all under sin. And my sins, the things I had done that were notably sin sinful, oh, they, they uh, stood out before me as very, very terrible. Because this time, I was seeing sin as before a holy God and the way the Holy God sees sin. The Holy Spirit of God was oppressing upon me the conviction and the work of the Holy Spirit. He convicts us of our sins, of our righteousness, which I realized I had not. With that great, uh, with that great presence that came over me, I woke up and I realized I was a sinner. I had nothing, no righteous of my own. And then he convinced me of judgment yet to come. As I looked about, honestly, I thought I could see hell coming across that valley below me and myself plunging into it with no way out of it. And I tell you, it was a fearful sight. It was a fearful sight. I had never been much to pray or try to pray. But I, I kneeled. I bowed on my knees on that rooftop and said, Oh God, have mercy upon me. I knew not what to do. I knew what to say. And I said, Please, show me what I need to do. And uh, I did not know. Honestly, I did not know. I did not understand that point. But I woke up and realized I needed more than what I had. I needed more than what I was. I needed something I didn't have to please a holy and a righteous God with. And, uh, and just a couple of weeks later, in a Baptist church, the preacher preached, and I realized what I needed was Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I went forward that Sunday, as a Sunday evening, and I bowed and I asked the Lord to forgive me my sins and to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And He did that very thing. That's been over 46 years ago now. And from that moment, the light came on in my eyes and my mind, and I woke up into a new world. What about that? And I've been in this new world now over 46 years. And it gets brighter and brighter all the time. I woke up uh, from the darkness of sin. You see, sin blinds you. It had me blinded. I couldn't see God in His ways. But I woke up. 
and you, and I could see the lights came on and uh, I was driving down the road going home and uh, it was about 30 some mile drive and I had a habit of stopping buying a, a beer to drink on the way home and I got to coming down the road thinking well I guess I guess I got a little religious up there and I went in to, at the stop and got me a, a, a one to drink I started to drink that and I could not drink it uh, a new voice spoke up within my car he said you don't need that get rid of that so much to the point I rolled the window down threw it out lured the highway and haven't touched it since oh you see I woke up to a new world and that new world did not include drinking and it wasn't long every time it worked I'd say something I shouldn't say that uh, the Holy Spirit would chase me and rebuke me for it, so I shouldn't be talking that way. And I'd kind of look around and think, my, what is this? And I realized it was the Holy Spirit of God dealing me. I had woke up in a new world. I was a newborn child of God. And he was telling me, this is the way you walk therein. What about that? I really woke up. And that year at Christmas time, it was different than any other year at Christmas time in December rolled around. Things had taken a big change in my life over the next four months. Uh, people began to notice that. My grandma said, Dave, I, I, when I told her I'd gotten saved, she said, I knew it. So I could see it in your face. I went to visit a preacher on you. He's down at the bar and working. He had talked to him before about Christ. I walked in, I'd speak to him. He looked at me. I think he said, I think I know what you're here about. I said, Yeah, I got saved. He said, I knew it. I knew it. So I could tell it when you walked in. What about that? Uh, the uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, superintendent, or the supervisor, the zone supervisor, at the supermarket I worked in, uh, one day not long after that, uh, came in and said, David, I managed the produce park. He said, let's go get us a steak. I said, okay. And so I went, we went to a nearby steakhouse, and we sat in there, he said, David said, uh, I've just been noticing that your work has become much, much better. He had threatened to fire me twice before that. And, uh, but, uh, I'd woke up. I was doing better on my job, much better, to the point that my department went from the last of the zone to the top of the zone. That's the truth. He said, I'm just wondering, what's brought about the change? And I sat there at the table and I said, I honestly said, I, I, don't, I don't know. He said, I've just noticed it's, uh, you for the last few months that it's, uh, it's just been different. He said, you, he said, your figures are on top. He said, your rack is good, no bad stuff in it. You, uh, everything we want you to do, you, you've done, and you are done. And I said, he said, I just wonder what's brought about the change. Uh, and I said again, I said, I really don't know. And then, and it hit me. I said, well, about so many months back, I got saved and became a Christian. He said, well, I'm glad you did. He said, if that's the case, I wish everybody would. Hey, wouldn't it be great if everybody woke up? The woke that everybody needs is the Lord Jesus Christ. To wake up and realize your sin. To wake up and realize you can't save yourself. To wake up and realize the only one that can save you is Jesus Christ the righteous. Now, that's the waking up that this world needs. This other woke stuff will take you to a devil's hell. Won't do you any good. And for the last 46 Christmases, I had been awake. And that was my first woke Christmas that year. And that year, I was concerned about Jesus Christ. It meant more to me to think about his birth than any other time I'd been upon the earth. So my dear friends, that's uh, my first woke Christmas. Don't let this present-day crowd 
try to drag you in to think you're pleasing to God but join up with that bunch of sinful darkened mind people it's the work of the devil and if you know Christ you don't need to be part of it 